Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome back to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we're talking about camel rose fiber and under the sea sparkle. So you may notice right off the bat that something is a little different. That's because I'm filming on my telephone because my camera card was corrupted and I wasn't sure if it was a card or just an error and then it was a card and long story short it's being mailed to me. So uh, I didn't want to leave you guys high and dry and my camera is really good video wise but the audio may be a little sketchy. However, I don't think you guys will mind for one week. Hopefully not. Uh, don't hit unsubscribe just because the audio is weird on this one. Usually it's great. In fact, my professional microphone is acting as a phone tripod rather than a microphone at the moment. Uh, I think it will also be excited to get back to its regularly programmed job. So, um, all that to say, we are working with camel this time. Um, this is what it looks like. Surprise! Spoiler alert! Um, that is the camel that we are spinning. It is from my Paradise Fiber of the Month Club box, which I will leave link down below to. And the sparkle, the Angelina, is also a Paradise Fiber of the Month Club win. They send the coolest stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this has to be my favorite Angelina blend ever. It's got like emerald and blue and turquoise and white and holographic and all kinds of goodness. Do you see how much I put in there? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> and then the next ingredient is rose fiber. Um, I got the rose fiber from Lux Fiber Designs, and as per usual, all of the fiber and the links to where I procure them is down below. I will tell you more about the experience I had with the actual blending and spinning in the voiceover, but I wanted to pop in and really introduce it and tell you where I got it from and just say that this stuff is so soft and majestic. Yes, majestic. So I will see you on the other side. Enjoy! Okay, so you may be noticing that this is not the camel fiber that you thought you were going to be seeing blended on the blending board. That's because uh, the first casualty in my card corruption was the first part of this video. I had hoped my card was just that one time was corrupted, but no, it was just corrupted altogether. So I'm recreating the effect using some mohair, silk, and faux cashmere blended bat here. But what you're watching now is exactly the same. So I'm doing a rose fiber gradient and I've visually divided up the bird into thirds. So the first third I try and fill up the teeth so I don't see much of the curtain cloth beneath. The middle portion I try to see it sparsely, and then the final portion, I try and just barely lay the fibers over the top. Um, and then I go over the whole thing with this incredible uh, Angelina blend that I got in my Paradise Fiber of the Month box. I have raved about this stuff. It is my favorite blend. Um, so I did an ingredient, the Angelina, I just put it on strong because I want to sparkle to grab because you can never have too much sparkle. So then I just brushed it down onto the bird. Um, I didn't notice that the add-ins wanted to pull up other than a couple of Angelina fibers. Um, and then this is where it's different. Um, this fiber I just laid it on no big deal, but the camel was very short staple length, so I kind of had to grab a puff and comb it down. So the teeth on the blending board opened up the little puffs, but it still remained really bumpy and locky. And uh, I've included some still photos at the end of this video clip so you can see what I'm talking about to get an idea of what it looked like. But in general, it was just straightforward blending board 101 stuff. Um, I think you could manipulate it so there were a lot more locks or you could have maybe ran it through hand curters first so it was smoother. It's totally up to you. Um, 
But once I'm finished here, I just roll it off like normal. And again, like I said, I put photos at the end of this clip so you can see what the camel looked like. So I'm going to let you listen to the music and enjoy watching. Okay, so now that we're kind of back to <laughs> where we started, um, you're going to be able to see the gradient come out a lot better than you might anticipate. I was surprised at how obvious this rose fiber gradient was when I rolled it. Um, also, I was surprised at how it didn't want to get stuck on the bird. Um, as for the actual removal, I don't think there's much to say. I just took it off like usual. Um, yeah, it's just normal Rolex. So I'm going to jump right into telling you about camel fiber. I couldn't find much about rose fiber. I wanted to do a little bit on that, but I want to do some more research because I, I feel unprepared. Um, oh, the one thing I did want to say here is you do have to brush it up because the camel is such a short staple length as compared to the rose fiber. When you don't brush it up, you catch the rose and not the camel just because of the variation in length. So keep that in mind if you mix the camel with a longer staple length. So the fiber that we spin from camels is from the two hump Bactrian camels and they originate in the steppes of Central and Eastern Asia. They've adapted to survive that extremely cold environment in the Gobi Desert. Um, though there are some herds in Iran and Afghanistan, Russia, New Zealand, and Tibet, uh, but they're considered not as good quality uh, in softness or just in general. Um, because the animals really do thrive best in their natural environment. Um, they're kept by the traditional herders. So th these aren't just people who started the camel fiber business. This is their livelihood since forever. <laughs> um, the current herd size estimate is 1.4 million animals, which sounds large, but not when you consider how many sheep there are in comparison. So the camels molt uh, for six to eight weeks every spring, and they're actually hand collected, the fibers. So they don't usually do shearing, um, especially not in the Gobi Desert region. There are some shearing done in other countries, um, but even then they don't shear the humps. Because if you shear the humps, you compromise the animal's ability to regulate its body temperature very dramatically. Um, the inner coat has to be dehaired because there is a coarse outer coat and overall the animal produces about 10 to 20 pounds of inner coat every year and then 
a few kilos more kilos <laughs> a few pounds more of coarse fiber as well um, the dehairing process is expensive and time-consuming similar to the dehairing process of uh, cashmere and that's one of the reasons why it's so expensive in addition to the fact that it has to be hand gathered and there's so few animals and the best ones are from the indigenous regions so the babies are lighter they can range from white to fawn and then the adults tend to be like a darker brown or red um, they're also slightly coarser than the babies, which is typical in fiber-bearing animals. Um, the camel's micron count, the camel down micron count is 17 to 19, and usually it has a 25 to 75 millimeter staple length. So it's a lot shorter in staple length than anything I've really ever spun, um, which was definitely interesting. Um, I was worried that it was gonna be a pain to spin because I can't long draw much to my annoyance but when I did this chunky funky and combined with the Angelina and the rose paper it actually behaved really well um, I really I really felt like this was a relaxing sort of you don't have to pay attention sort of a spin which was not what I expected I expected this to be a pain in the patootie <laughs> But anyway, back to the camel hair. Um, it isn't all that elastic, but it provides quite a lot of warmth without bulk because there's a hollow space at the center of the fiber that acts as a vacuum. So it insulates either cold or hot air. Um, it's also very waterproof and it doesn't felt easily. So overall, it makes it really suitable for um, the traditional yurt covers and slippers and coats and things like that but also more fashion fabric like a lot of spinners want it for or fashion designers um people have been wearing camel hair clothing um since forever in the bible in matthew 3 chapter 4 they actually mention camel fiber which i thought was cool so they use it in their tents and carpets and cloaks and things like that. Very similar to the people in the Gobi Desert, uh, which I think is interesting that you can go from someplace so cold and have it be a really warm, insulating, environmentally crucial fiber, but also in the middle of the Middle Eastern Desert, which, I don't know, fiber is so fascinating. Anyhow, um... The earliest recorded Western news is the 17th century, um, and then in the 19th century they started mixing it with wool. Jaeger, which is a British uh, sports fashion manufacturer, used it in like polo coats and suits in the 20s and 30s, so that was pretty popular. Um, so you may have heard of the casual camel hair sports coat. As far as what you do with the coarser outer fiber, um, they use it in things like upholstery and carpet, and um, if you happen to live in a traditional area, they still use it for tents and coats and slippers and things. So that's pretty cool. I do recommend you look up some Mongolian yurts and slippers just to see kind of what they look like and then realize a lot of time those are camel hair products. So, I hope you learned quite a lot about camel in this process. Now I will leave you to watch the rest of the video.
All right, so we finished our spin. Like I said, this is what it looks like. Um, I kind of talked to you about what I did, um, and then I will have photos, obviously, as you can see, like right here, or here, or maybe right in the middle of my face. It's always kind of hard to fit those photos in. I haven't quite mastered how to do that most effectively. But anyway, here is what it looks like. The drape, ooh, it's so great, the drape I dropped it. The drape is really good. I worked really hard not to over twist it, especially because my last spin, the Tunis, I really over spun it. So I was feeling a little traumatized that I needed to underspin. Um, and I was going to, like I mentioned in the voiceover, spin it uh, as a single. Um, but I just, because that's how I prepped it. You know, I did the gradient, rose fiber, and everything. And you can't really see that unless you spin it. Thank you as a single, but I just really wanted to highlight that texture and then soften it out again. So I did go ahead and two ply it and I could not be more enthusiastic about it. It is just beautiful. Um, it's not scratchy. The only part that could be a little scratchy is the Angelina. So if you want to really highlight the super softness, I wouldn't go for Angelina. Uh, it's a little pokey. And you don't notice that, except when you spin it with something that's so soft. So maybe a fire star instead. Because uh, fire star is a pulled nylon, it's a little bit more closely related to faux cashmere, where an Angelina is like big, sort of flat, pulled ribbon almost is a good way to describe it. Um, but anyway, this is really great. I love it a lot. And I cannot wait to weave with it because this is going to be at the top of my weaving pile. I'm going to be like, Mother, I don't care what you want to do. I want to weave this stuff. So, <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this spin. Let me know if you've ever worked with Campbell and what you did with him <laughs> in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you liked it. Hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any of these shenanigans that we have to our <laughs> And as per usual, this episode is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. Yes, our Patreon patrons are the heartbeat of the show and they really make a huge difference both financially and for the content. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So if you would like to be a Patreon patron and have a hand in the creation of the show, Anyway, if you like this with all of its baby bean goodness, go ahead, join the Patreon family. We would love to have you. And now we shall say goodbye. Can you say goodbye? Bye. Bye. I love how you participate in that part.